everybody. Welcome to Hamster's Hobby. Ha Wait a minute. It's only Monday. Uh, we're still painting, though. And uh, we're, we're uh, showing off some uh, elven heroes here, which is actually going to be pretty useful for those of you that have unpainted ruins coming because it's inspired by the ruins scheme. Um, and I've actually, you know, learned a thing or two about how I, I like to uh, uh, paint, paint this scheme. And, of course, there's extra accents added to the elven heroes that you could maybe think about inserting on some of your cooler ruin centerpieces. Uh, so there's some, some new ideas and some tried and true ruins ideas on here. So I'm excited to show this off. Yeah. It's hobby hangout. It's basically the hobby Basically, hang. it's just me and Chris. And that's, what, that's what we realized coming into it. It was like, oh, yeah, we essentially just kind of wound up with a hobby hang situation. Yeah. Uh, you say that like it's a bad thing. It's yeah, not a bad thing. No, that, not that at was, all. That was a thing. It was really like, ah, one of the sad things about doing the Kickstarter is like, yeah, we won't really be able to fit hobby hang in yeah. because we have all these other streams we need to do. So hobby hang would just kind of get in the way. And then just kind of... Yeah, I've actually moved into a much nicer room. You don't see my open closets uh, and whatnot. Uh, I have a cool, sweet backdrop, as you can see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're living large over here. Is, is that what this is? Oh, yeah, show you that also... off. What color do you want? Oh, my... She's nice catch! Yeah, that was great. Oh my gosh! Did you? Did yeah, you, we've all signed waivers. Uh, did you play? Did room. you play baseball growing up? <laughs> no. What a catch! I can tell. Yeah, Nate's setting up lights <laughs> for other cool stuff in here while we're in here. Yeah, so we've we've got hamster relegated to a side table for painting for <laughs> for multiple reasons. Uh, the main thing being, uh, if you hear clanking and the sounds of somebody like hitting their head and then swearing, uh, Nate uh, is Nate is in the room uh, setting up some lights for a thing we're trying to shoot today. Well, yeah, I went with a neutral gray today, strategically, so uh, hopefully I can uh, accompany any color. But let's see, what, what's been your favorite on the new backdrop? You've been testing... Ooh, I like the magenta kind you of. You know, it's, really, it's like cyan, dude. Yeah! Really cyan. The true primaries, right, followers of Marco Frizzoni? Cyan, Woo! magenta, yellow. How's that? Well, I like you, you're in outer space. Whoa! <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Painting a little slowly, anti-gravity. Doing yeah. Nate stuff, yeah, exactly. And uh, I've got a little monitor for him over there, so he can uh, see uh, stuff as you guys chat. But you know, when he gets into his painting, he's probably not going to be looking at it too I much. I see so. all kids' table. Yes, I can't wait Thanksgiving to be turning thirty next year and still sitting at the kids' table. Family's too big. The slots have been taken. We'll get around to painting eventually, whenever. Uh... Well, like you said, it's like hobby hang, so there has to be ninety-nine percent chatter and banter, and maybe we'll put paint on a model. Yeah. Maybe we'll get around to doing a base coat. Yeah. Hey, I've, I came equipped with the base coats. That's All fair. Right. <laughs> uh, we also are kind of repurposing the stream to have Hamster get some stuff done that he needs to get done for work Yes, he's, he said, I'm setting up a painting table. I said, oh, good, I get to paint on the show. I can finish the thing I'm supposed to finish. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know. That's why I set this up. Uh, <laughs> Multi-purpose. Ty Ty so Tyler up. was like, look, if you're going to be taking up Hamster's time for an hour, can you find a way to make it like somewhat productive yes exactly because like, I, exactly. I need him to paint these things it's like <laughs> yeah i think we can i think we can handle that so we're gonna start off with the we might do more than this depending on how it goes yeah we'll see yeah, yeah. um it might take up the time to, to finish these two and also explain it but uh if you're lucky we'll move on to something else as well so yeah i know what the next thing would be it'd be pretty exciting to see him yes um they're they're put well this is maybe gives it away actually they're, yeah okay. all right can't quite put my finger on it <laughs> okay that was better than what i had <laughs> uh, however it also probably does exactly give it away all right yeah um okay so let's get uh, started we have a question from oh. griffin mace wondering if we're able to talk about what these pieces are for Oh. Griffin Mace. Is that yeah. a new newcomer to the chat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new challenger approaches. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously this is the uh, Elven Hero. I'm sure many of you have seen this before. Uh, this one is rigged up with an LED, so uh, we'll put the nice, clear, transparent orb on here. So this will house likely your, uh, your D20, your favorite die. And uh, also designed to be a great centerpiece uh, and, and to go alongside with the ruins. And Toby did some awesome builds I've seen with the uh, Wildlands and Ruins on there with the Elven pieces. And they put um, some of the fire bits in, in, in some of the Elven reliquaries. It just looks so freaking awesome. I just love, like, when I'm sitting at the, 
paint table staring at a bunch of these pieces as soon as i like see them in here on the build and the lighting and everything i just get so excited so it's been awesome to see them in builds you okay. know what we made a pledge basically because toby kept putting those fire things in we made a pledge the terrain the terrain uh, builder pledge now has those fire i i saw that because because of toby I oh, saw that in the update. I was like, that's absolutely perfect. Because, like, it can just we, go with anything. Why didn't we put the wolf's bane in? <laughs> the it was in for a moment. And then, uh, it was? Yeah. That's pretty funny, actually. We had a lot of things in for a moment that then didn't quite pull out. But... There's a lot of... It, 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 messing around with putting a bunch of stuff in these reliquaries has made me really want to, like, get things going on, like, making those, like, accessory packs and stuff. Yes. Like... Where did you use Goldens, Ham? What's that? I mean, I was wondering uh, where you use the Goldens on the model. Oh, well, we will uh, hopefully get there on stream, um, but it's mostly on some of this, let's see, cool detail uh, on some of sort of the inner inner swirlies here. And uh, that's cool because it's not a section that necessarily shows up on a lot of the ruins, and so it's a great place to uh, add a really cool color. And honestly, every time we add uh, the Golden Interference shimmery paints, it, it always ends up looking cool. So I was happy when I finally, for some reason when I was first designing this, I didn't even like consider those. Not on purpose, they just like didn't pop into my head. I was staring at all my Picorni paints and I was like, wait a minute, we have Interference. And it turned out to be the thing for this. So. Like of all the magical elven. I know, I know, like that was the perfect choice. How did I not think of it? The first thing you I should have just started with this whole thing and Interference. <laughs> The interference paints are kind of cheating. <laughs> yeah, they're, well, that's the thing is like they're just so easy to use, and the effect is just incredible, and it, it, there's like no work to it. Um, uh, shout oh. out to Gray Raven doing uh, the pondering my orb meme, <laughs> which is pretty good. Uh, those Raven orbs, the fact that we, the fact that Reliquaries let us get the Raven orbs out of retirement is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, we should start a retirement fund. Like, what, you know, what pieces would you like to have come? I back? think that's legitimately. If people have like been asked us to do Kickstarters just to like do yeah, mold, re mold reconfiguration Kickstarters, I think the problem with doing it as a Kickstarter is like, that's a pitch that we can only make to people who already know us. Yeah. But I think, but I think like if if a random person is going through and sees, oh, they're doing mold reconfigurations, my favorite product. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> if, we, if we can, we, you know, you package it up with stuff that's cool, like the way we did the Raven Orbs, but like some way to, you know, get some, get some people to, to shout, their, you know, cheer for their favorite things for, that want to come back. For cities, it definitely has me thinking, maybe for cities we can include a couple things that are like, hey, yes. this is like, we've grabbed some, because I'm sure that there's some really cool pieces in cities and castles that are stuck in weird mold configurations that would be nice to rescue. Yeah, I mean, remember those those war game sets? I'm not biased in any way, of course, but <laughs> they were uh, just reconfigs, you know. So yeah. I think it's just a matter of like taking the pieces and like what ser purpose does the set serve, you know? Just like give it a. But you're doing a disservice, hamster. Like those things are awesome, right? You did a really good job making cool sets, even though it's existing pieces. Like, yeah. Those those sets are fantastic. You know what? That was a lot of fun to work on because it honestly was some of the first real building I did with our yeah. pieces. You know, I, I was doing a lot of paint and sometimes I like wouldn't necessarily even know of pieces that hadn't come across my desk. I was like, oh, this is in that Kickstarter. That's cool. Uh, but so I then I really got, you know, my hands dirty with uh, some of the, the building. So to experiment with those is really fun because I was basically just playing with Dwarven Forge. Can the catacombs fire fit into the orbs as well? Do we have separate fire from the catacombs? Would that be resin? Yes. Both count. Uh, you, think, you think it would I fit in? Yeah, it probably would. It's... We don't have any just on hand, do we? No, I have to bring some in. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are getting buffering. That's unfortunate. Uh, hopefully we're not getting throttled. Although I don't think that would make you buffer. It would just make us uh, frame skip. You went very pixelated here for several minutes, but it's cleared again now. I think we might have been getting throttled again. What is by Twitch? Not by Twitch, by our, our internet provider. Oh, yeah. They've always been Multiple stellar, times. Yeah, multiple times we've been like, hey. So when we try to stream suddenly, like, we're paying for, like, very fast internet. But right. we never actually seem to get the internet at that speed. Like, our, our upload speed is abysmal. That's wild. And, and working... It's not where it should be. 
working in a field where it's it's worse than like my home internet like by oh my far gosh. which i i know we're paying for more than that yeah and enough, there aren't enough people here that use like the internet heavily for it to be like that slow when we're trying to upload something yeah it's really it's really unfortunate but it's it's that whole thing where it's like what are we going to do like get a different internet provider <laughs> They're yeah, the they're the only, only one. ones that they're the only ones that service this area. The monopoly. Like, yeah. That's kind of that's kind of the state of it in New York is they kind of d- divided up the, uh, the the boroughs. So like, pr- there's pretty much only one company, in uh, in each area, and you don't really get a lot of choices. And so as a result, I've noticed if you go in for customer service, they like don't care because they know they you can't switch. <laughs> they don't. They don't care. Get Verizon FiOS. I would love for us to be able to get Verizon FiOS. I have checked if it's available at each apartment that I apply for, and it never is. It's yep. like very select few areas out here. Yep. Uh, Glamourmouth wants to know if this is what you call a heavy dry brush. Yeah. So um, definitely want to talk about the paint here. So take note oh, yeah. if you're uh, the point of the stream. A painting ruins. Um, the the steps are all designed to like the the later ones hide any mistakes on uh, your old ones. So this is actually not really a dry brush. I'm actually allowing the paint to be pretty wet, just so we can get it in basically one or two passes. Um, the only real equivalent to a dry brush is the direction. It, it, the the intention is the same of trying to hit upper areas and leaving some of the blue base coat. It's just uh, slapped on with some Picorni blue. So what do you call it? I mean, I think a heavy dry brush, like, I, I, I would maybe use that term because it, it would make sense to people for, like, oh, how like you're executing brush. it. But The, the, um, the brush stroke style I've is also, like a dry brush. Yeah, I've also used, I've also heard it called an overbrush. Oh. Um, but basically, I'm not really wiping off a paint like a dry brush. I am making sure it's not globbed on there. So, But I, I'm letting the paint be wet and just making sure there's, like, not a glob on the brush. But it's still pretty wet and heavy paint um and it's okay if it's a little messy i often sometimes will try my first couple swipes on like an inconspicuous area so that if it's kind of streaky or there's too much paint i can adjust but you're not scrubbing it dry and getting really nitty-gritty um you do that more on the final dry brush which will kind of cover up any areas that might kind of irritate you from this step so i wouldn't be too precious about this one Trust me, I was over hundreds of prototypes, and it's just a headache, and you don't need to do it. Remember when you first when you first started, and you would spend like a day painting one okay. prototype? Okay, here's the <laughs> thing, and everyone was very nice about it. They're like, look, your work is great. Gotta speed it up just a you, little you bit. You spent all day painting one wall. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I thought this. Aaron had a pile yeah. of like 100 walls at the end of the day. I'm just happily... Won. Well, you know, yeah, I was trying to impress. Also, here's the thing. I don't know why I assumed this or why I didn't ask. But when they're like, yeah, we, we paint pieces uh, for people's tabletop terrain. I was like, oh, so you mean these pieces I'm painting. Yeah, I was I'm like, giving these I was like, I'm mailing these out to the customers. Which imagine my horror when you're like, hey, these aren't fitting right. Can you throw these on the belt sander <laughs> to make sure that they to like shave off a, a half, you know a little mi- few millimeters? I was like, are people gonna be okay with this when I deliver it to their homes? Personally deliver it? Uh, yeah, and that yeah, exactly. Hamster Express. And so then finally, I, I had the freaking light bulb moment. Removed the dunce cap. I was like, oh, this is just like for us in the in. Okay. And promotion and that kind of thing. So then I was flying. I was like, okay, great. That's how I started doing techniques like this. <laughs> Don't wipe the paint off. Just hide it later. Just hide it later. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was a, a great lesson and quite a relief, honestly. It is very funny how your standards were so much higher when you thought it was going to, like, be legitimately going to the customers. And stuff. Right, right. Well, it, like, the, yeah. and then... I mean, this is the thing about Dwarven Forge, right? It's like, you can know how to paint and everything, of course, but you got to learn how to work at Dwarven Forge, <laughs> you uh, know, specifically. What uh, are the secrets of working at Dwarven Forge? Well, got to so, get a taste for Runa. In, yeah, a yeah. taste for Runa, the clean yeah. energy drink. Not sponsored, but we might as well be. Guayusa tea. Guayusa. Yeah. Guayusa? Yeah, the G well, because that's its name. It's Portuguese. <laughs> but it's just, Portuguese? Or no, it's not. It's, uh, I thought it was South American. Yeah. Okay. Well, they speak... Portuguese in, in uh, I, I was I was a runa I was Brazilian. a I, yeah Brazilian right, yeah so South American I I was see I was 
I was a Runa salesman for a, <laughs> for a month and a half. You don't know how to so. say what you said. It's been a couple of years. I don't but, know what's worse, not having the exact pronunciation down or uh, not knowing where it's from. <laughs> yeah, did you sell any of it as a salesman? It's good. It makes you energized. Um, but, but you know, you learn little things. I mean, in my, you know, as a painter, it's just kind of like uh, you, you have a couple. You have got a giant pile of prototypes, right? And you got, mm -hmm. got a deadline. So you got to learn how to manage that. And basically, it comes down to things like... Uh, you have a you spend time on a, on a good sized batch, and then there's uh there's like the B batch, right. you know, the uh, the second string, and and Nate kind of organically when he's building with the prototypes, he'll put you know some are hiding as sort of the elevation support, they're in the back, they're on the bottom. They're character actors. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> they're the extras. So Featured you know, extras in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got these pieces are gonna eat lunch first, then yeah. these guys, this pile eats this after the, the crew. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you just learn little things like that and like where to put the energy because kind of like painting an army, right? Like if you put the energy that you're going to, that you want to put into your like named heroes and characters into every single little troop, you're going to go insane, right? So it's basically the same thing. Um, and that's what was fun about uh, reliquaries is, is like there was fewer pieces so you could really kind of take a little more time and, uh, get them all really nice. Um, and so that was that was kind of nice to finally just sort of be able to relax and do it a little bit with the smaller sets and uh, yeah. give them some love. Andrew, that's good advice for life. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, focus your energy on the high value things. You right? know what? You can't, you can't go fill in every single thing. Like figure out what your hero pieces are. And, you know, and that's life. actually true. I sh I'm still learning how to take that advice because uh, I spent a lot of time being wound up about a lot of little things, and uh, turns out that's not good for you. Okay, I made a command for uh, for the Twitch chat. Exclamation point Runa. Uh, it brings up, the Dwarven Forge office is powered by Runa, the clean energy drink made with brewed Wayusa. We're not sponsored, but we could be. Should be. Water. Yeah. yeah. So that is that is now a part of the Dwarven Forge canon. Um, Thanks, Hamster. Yeah. What were we talking about? Painting? Well, that's what I hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm still, I got two of these, so I'm still just kind of... Uh, but you can see it's like really not neat. It's just doing the purpose of making sure there's a shadow and a midtone, right? This mm -hmm. is, your base coat's the shadow. This is the midtone. To the get, elven runas. You know, everyone. <laughs> the the runas of Kalen's here. The the. <laughs> oh man, that's great. We got to make that into a graphic. That's a yeah. Uh, we got to give Finley credit for that one. That's very awesome. good. We need to. Do, oh, that's that's gonna be such a good. We need to we need to actually hit them up and. <laughs> Finley's a verified genius. Be the most. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> if you're far enough away from the mic that he didn't hear that, oh. go straight to his head. <laughs> Saying nice things about you, Finley. Oh, Nate. You know what I found out? Uh, There's something we should keep in mind for the stream on Thursday. You know what I found out? What? Frax uh, percentages are reversible. So twenty five percent of eight is the same as eight percent of twenty five. Yes. Holy smokes! But well, what did you learn? This is why. <laughs> this is why you're not the theoretical physicist. In the yeah, family. no, I was a theater Facts. major, so that's blowing uh, my mind. Uh, um, I learned uh, Persephoroth. Yes. Is a LARPer. That's what uh, Janet was saying. Yeah, Janet told me too. All right, cool. I don't have any new information then. You know what I learned after last Friday? <laughs> Is uh, Idle Champions is pretty fun. <laughs> oh, no. oh you've you been playing it too? <laughs> what? Oh, no. You've been playing it too? Yeah, because I was like, well, I'm, I'm on their stream. I better, like, check out the game. <laughs> and I, and Oh No is right, because I was sitting, the, like, in bed, and I was like, oh, God. That's I've been, the same thing. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, joined, I joined their Discord, like, partially. So I started playing because I was like, well, I should know the product. Yeah, kind of do exactly. This is for work. It's for work. So I started, like, playing. So I started, you know, I can buy as many chests as I want and write them off as a, as a business expense. <laughs> I'm, char I'm charging. I'm charging all my gold chests to Jay. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, we're streaming. Chris is just over there, frantically like tapping. Yeah, his yeah. Phone. He's like, I just gotta get this one more. It's Actually, research. Gotta... Uh, exactly. So yeah, so I started playing that for that, and then I joined their Discord to you know help answer questions about the uh, mm -hmm. about the skin, the free skin they get if they back the Reliquaries Kickstarter right. for one dollar. You get a, a human unlock as well as a exclu uh, not exclusive, but a very rare skin for him called Hammer Man. That is a Dwarven Forge. Woo! skin for him yeah. and three chests it's a it's a very good deal for one dollar it's very very good um 
But yeah, it's going to be a problem. It's absolutely going to be a problem for me. Uh, I actually this morning uninstalled it, and I will undoubtedly. You already like, uninstalled. I undoubtedly will, you know, get the itch too and so. But I was like, I'm already going down the rabbit hole. I got to take some time off until after the Kickstarter, at least. Eh. Redeem my skin, you know. Well, the thing is, like, I it's very easy to just like it, it's an idle game, so like, it can just do something. Uh, in theory, you just check yeah. in. But then you're like, I can get so much more if I tippity tap for hours. Well, I don't do any of the tapping. I let I, I let I let my mage hand do that. I'm a me. furious tapper. Yeah, I got the I got the mage hand familiar, so I've got that going. I'm a furious tapper. Um, you can double tap then. Yeah, that's only good <laughs> yeah. in like the early levels, and if that like efficiency, Chris. At the point where so the thing is like at the point where like, oh, yeah, it's not. I don't I don't need to do that. I I don't I don't really need to come in until like the higher levels where the clicking doesn't matter anymore. Sure, sure. That's the that's the part where it's now a thing. Where it's like, okay, I've got to, like, actually, like, try, uh, uh, I've got, I've got to try to, like, actually work, strategize yeah. here and, like, and, like, figure out who's going where. Um, man, it's making me really want to play a sorcerer. Play that much. <laughs> I've never gotten to play one. Everybody I, everybody I play with always wants to play full casters. Oh, and yeah. so I always wind up not being a full caster, because I, I always, like, want to just kind of fill in the gaps. Because I feel, I, I, I feel like I... I was the kid who like had to eat whatever my siblings didn't eat because we didn't want to waste food. Yeah. Do whatever class is left over. Yeah, it's it's just like, well, is everybody else? What is everybody else passionate about? And then my passion will just be whatever rounds out the party. Else wanted. Yeah. The but that's not true. I also want to play a wizard at some point. <laughs> you know. Great. You, you know what? The first... I really want to. I I always play completely low intelligence characters. Just once, I want to actually play somebody where like, cause I. I'm very cerebral, um, and I just I don't know like I, I I usually get very enticed by like that part of a game like the figuring things out uh, uh, part of things, but I never play characters who, <laughs> who are into that. So then whenever I like get like an idea, I have to try and find a way to help other people like get to that idea by my character kind of stupidly like dancing around it. Um, yeah. The first time I played a wizard was uh, playtesting Dungeon of Doom. And yeah. Nate's like, oh, we don't, we don't really have like a, a caster, so you should be a wizard. And also you're at level 10. I was like, great, first first spell oh, book I, I've, I've made, and my <laughs> brain broke. I had to go straight through to level 10, figuring out, one, how spells work, having rarely used them, and then like making the spell. Oh, man. But oh. it was a lot of fun once I got got through it. But the, the, the homework, uh, I was kind of... Uh, what was yeah, that guy's, busted. What was his name? Um, um I uh, Malik. Malik, yes, yes, yes. He's he, still on my uh, D and D Beyond. You know what was really fun about Malik? What's that? Was uh, he had like no armor and no hit points? <laughs> well, no. He, sounds like a wizard. Yeah. But it, but like sounds like, like a noob you wizard. Had, you had no. You had like no magic items to up your AC. You had like a twelve AC. You nope. were tenth level wizard with like a twelve yep. AC and like thirty hit points. So you're incredibly squishy, but you could you could churn out like just obscene damage. Yep. You had some like serious <laughs> hitting stuff. So you would like you would blast stuff, and then like one monster would like would catch up with you and just obliterate. It you. just oh man. And, but it it was it it really reinforced the party dynamics. Yes. Said, oh wait, we gotta figure out how to protect Malik, and we get especially Glass when we were trying to like yeah, figure out. Glass. It was when we were trying to figure out, like, you know, which door to go to. We're like, oh, well, let's trigger this thing, and then let's pull this lever to see what they do, which which uh, started, uh, triggered a door to close, start slowly closing. Oh. And and no one, we were all trying to, like, figure out what the heck are we supposed to do, and I was like, screw it, and I dove in there, and everyone's like, well, he's going to die if we don't do something. You were so alone. In the I was the alone, and, and then that's when, like, the boss monster spawned out of, like, one of the little dungeons, and I was alone, and I, I, I genuinely, in my head, I was like, oh, man, I might have screwed everyone up. I might have I might have done a bad thing. But you survived it. But yeah, I survived yeah. thanks to my friends. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it a was lot. Crazy. It turned it up being a lot of fun. It was tension. It was right? drama, it was yeah. Like, we got to get him out of there. He's, it, like, in his underwear. Like, I pretty much might as well have been. Oh, I just got my white hands <laughs> and a few spells. I um, uh, Neofoya is saying. Uh, to be honest, my brother told me I'm the reason why he only lets players do point by when he's DM rather than roll for stats. <laughs> me having rolled up too many characters with multiple eighteens as starting stats. Oh my I'm gosh! Finding, I'm finding that hilarious and fitting. <laughs> 
So here, um, I'm finally, I'm using kind of a softer brush. Um, the big Dwarven Forge dry brush uh, has some, a few softer bristles. If you also have some of the synthetics with the uh, white bristles, kind of like uh, our friend at Ghost Tiny uh, makes some of these. Um, they're especially for these softer shapes that, like the ruins have those like hard edges, right? So you, you can kind of use any brush and they're also kind of gritty and weathered. So you can get sort of that dusty look. But if you use a softer brush, you can still dry brush on softer shapes, like these beautiful cloud-like shapes that Michelle did. Um, and so now this is the final dry brush. So I am rubbing off most of the paint and uh, doing does, a lighter touch. Why does the softer, why does the softer brush let you get? Well, Honestly, and actually this is appropriate because I often literally use makeup brushes from the pharmacy. So imagine like when you put out makeup and it just sort of starts feathering it out. Um, it, it, it just, it, it, it has a, like a feather duster thing of just smoothing out the, the paint um, as it's drying because it is still a little bit wet. It's not like fully dried paint. And so it, as you're moving it around, it doesn't uh, streak like like Got you know when you when you throw down like a rough hardware store paintbrush on the wall those tough bristles you know you're gonna see the, the bristle marks but the soft makeup brush kind of feathers it out as it's moving around i thought the hardware store paintbrush is your example yeah <laughs> you know often yeah. used in miniature painting those chip brushes that people use all the time yeah like, uh... so uh, me and a couple of my friends rolled for a game we're gonna start playing after the kickstarter and one of them rolled his stats, and he got an 18, an 18, a 12, a 16, a 17, and an 8. Whoa. As his, as his rolls. Uh, which means he's starting, his, starting, his starting stats uh, from left to right, strength through charisma, are uh, 20, 17, 19, 16, 8, and 12. What? He's starting with 20 strength and 19 constitution. <laughs> and 17 dexterity. Quite a wizard he's making. Uh, oh, what is he playing? I think he's playing a fighter. But like his one weakness is gonna be wisdom saves. <laughs> the big one. Yeah. And um, also remember like the Picorni paints um are often pretty you know thin down. They have like a lot of medium in it. Um, and so again, this is a little more advanced. Like definitely take off more paint than that. But uh, you can use this to your advantage with the softer shapes too if it is a, like the paint that is remaining on your brush is a little bit wet because that, again, uh, helps the soft bristles feather it out so it's not just a, a dry clump which kind of gets that chalky look that sometimes you like on things like terrain. Um, but it being a little bit wet, again, kind of like the creamy base makeup idea of as you keep moving it around with the soft bristles it slowly fades out and so now we're actually getting uh, a, a couple different you know values in here um, and that's also why the heavy uh, dry brush or overbrush with the the mid-tone um, is good is because you need an opaque layer over it I've actually done this with a lot of ruins prototypes where I would try to dry true dry brush too much with the mid-tone and uh, I wouldn't get enough opacity so it'd still be kind of dark and so once you hit it with a stone edge dry brush you can't it doesn't actually like brighten it up because it's so desaturated because of the darkness underneath it so getting a big sloppy opaque you know that that sort of uh, turquoise blue is gonna uh, reinforce the brightness of the highlight yeah it's wild how much it's already like kind of blended into a gradient right exactly it's like a natural gradient it's the same paint it's pretty much the same step we're just gonna as we, we i kind of do one once over and i do let it dry because it is slightly wet um so as you move around the model it's gonna it's gonna dry but i don't try to finish this step in one coat really i kind of just get the whole thing kind of to to like this level at, at the very least where and and even here is a, a good example um where it, it's not the brightest it's going to be but it has some of that value shift and then we're going to finally be like okay that's done it's kind of step three b uh where we're doing the same thing but we're being a little more selective being um more targeted with the direction of the dry brush to hit the highest most points and you basically have like you know six different colors in here by just using a couple paints it's wild. How quickly this is all coming together, too. I mean, I guess you had the initial dark blue base coat done already. But. Yeah, but, you know, again, it, it's kind of like, like, this is the, the most precise step that I'm doing now. 
and it's not even doesn't take like a lot of precision. Like you're not sitting with your zero round. And, and this like, is for to... this is for a piece that's more ornate than uh than the standard runes. Right, right. And so um you know there there's no steps that like take a lot of time or attention to like execute. There's no like super fine detail going on. So um, that's part of why I like it. It's like, yeah, there's a there's a, a few steps. I did come in with the base coat, but that's pretty much just slopping it on and letting it dry, you know. Um, you might even honestly be able to skip it. Uh, it's, I, I mean, I like it because, again, it's just a, another opaque layer that reinforces uh, everything else. But at the end of it, you do see very little blue, and actually on the Elven Hero, I do do some little washes uh, to sort of get the regal blue because it's pretty transparent this paint and so once it's all highlighted you're going to get another shift value shift from the same paints you've used but just over a different layer um, and so over the the brighter layer it's going to be a more saturated blue so you can reinforce the shadows um, but it's more of a, a mid-tone gradient it's like a second shadow before the darkest shadow um, so yeah all these all, all these steps are like designed to be uh pretty low precision like all, all of my dwarven forge schemes i really try to like el eliminate as many super precision heavy steps um, just because you know that just slows down your batch painting you know i think that's like the point too I, when people get when people are intimidated about uh getting into painting this stuff i think they they, they imagine taking the same amount of time per like square millimeter i guess i don't know what the best unit you know, measurement is uh, as they would for like painting their player mini. Right, right. No, no way, no way. And and I've done that. You know, I've had schemes where I'm like, I gotta cut out some steps, man. You know, like that's part of it. Cause so I've been there, and like there's a reason. You know, when you're painting terrain, you're painting multiple steps. And again, like when you're painting army troops, you know, you're not just. And this is an example of a centerpiece. Maybe you would put a little more attention to. Um, but but even so, the scheme is designed to like. You don't need to be a super advanced painter to pull it off. It's it's made that way on purpose. Um, I feel like that's one you'd put a little extra love into. Oh, one hundred percent. And like it has more of the accents and more of the details. Um, but like the actual, it's not like if you have shaky hands, sorry that you're not going to paint this piece. Like there's nothing like that um, going on. And I, I've always, I've, I've said this on the Idol Champion stream too. I've always said you don't need steady hands to paint miniatures. You need to steady your hands. Uh, Whoa! You know, it's not. <laughs> I told you this when I was doing the, the your your uh, natural ones like little thing, Chris, where it's like just points of contact, right? Yeah. Get your elbows on the table, get your wrists together, do, and now all of a sudden you have a pinpoint. Tripod, like, yeah. yeah, pinpoint accuracy. And if you feel like you're not getting it all, oh, my hands are too shaky. It's not anything you're doing wrong. It's just find another point of contact or another position. Boy, Hampshire, you have so many words of wisdom. You should like have like a weekly stream about. You that. think so? Yeah. I do it on the Door Forge uh, channel, I mean, maybe. People <laughs> might like want to listen to this sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, I'll think about it. I don't you know. Could hang out, and just do hobby stuff. <laughs> Man, Ray I got is, plenty of gray to paint. Ray is so chewing through these epic rolls. Nice. Another, uh, yep, he's got another one in there. I think it's the last one. Um, oh man. I think the only <laughs> I think the only terrain that we can't really apply a lot of this painting advice to mm -hmm. is uh, Hellscape, just because with Hellscape you do need to be precise. Yeah, yeah but but honestly, like. I guess, so when I'm talking precision, I'm talking about something like eyes, where it's like, you need to place this dot exactly in this spot. And Hellscape is definitely more advanced, but it, like the lava and that kind of thing is still just like your your regular old sort of glazing over the casting color. Like we, we took all steps necessary to make it easy to paint. The casting color really helps, and it's just a matter of thinning down your paint and uh, getting a glazer wash over it uh, to taste. And just just do a bunch of layers that are thin, and as long as you take your time, you know you can just layer it up, and you can't really go wrong because a thin layer, even if it's maybe in a spot you don't want, is hardly going to be noticeable. So it's just a lot of glazing and layering, uh, those sort of washes on the casting color, and bada bing, you got the the great lava gradient that Aaron designed. Woo! Uh, 
uh, RG Dice Boutique is saying, I've seen Hamster mention enjoying oils and painting recently. Well, not for this. How does he enjoy them and work with the long dry times? I'm an oil painter, but never tried to use it on my sculpts. Um, so I am admittedly uh, new to oils, but I have already, for years before this and even now, seen it used in a lot of uh, videos, and a, a lot of that stuff made sense to me once I finally used it. So I, I think I have some sense. Um, the, I, I, I don't think I would necessarily do a whole miniature in oils. Um, you know, go talk to James Wapple if you want to see that done, because he does a great job. Um, but again, it comes down to like the opaque layers. I think the oils really get those gradients and transparency effects done really well and easily. Um, and so I start with, with basically just acrylic flat base coats uh, on stuff, or maybe airbrush um, sort of stuff going on. Some acrylic base coat for like the main colors of, of everything. Um, and so I, and then I will mostly use washes, uh, the oil washes. And the reason that they're so good is just that the mineral spirits has a lower surface tension than like a water-based acrylic wash. So it flows into the recesses way better than anything that's water-based will ever do. And you can, you know, also do no wrong with that with that technique because you can just take stuff off. Um, that's why the, the longer drying time is such a boon is uh, you can just take some mineral spirits or even just, uh, you know, a Q-tip or a brush and, and move it around infinitely until you, you get the exact result that you want. Um, but I did even uh, go further once sort of the the spirits itself had dried. There's still, of course, wet oils on it. And I did sort of do some detail highlighting, uh, you know, a little more traditional, not just an oil wash, uh, but some some detailing and highlighting with the oils. And, I mean, that was just such a blast because you just get the soft, soft transitions um, with pretty little effort. And... I definitely did run into some hiccups just because I was getting used to the medium and and so I think uh, you do need to like relearn this is true with acrylics too you need to like learn how to dilute the paints and each particular color to behave how you want but once you get that down it's like really a dream to just feather those blends infinitely uh, and they're just active forever um, and just get really smooth smooth gradients going on um, but yeah, I definitely, I, I, I've, I guess if I had any advice, if you're doing oil washes, thin them less so than more, because if you get, if you over thin them, it's kind of funny to say that because you think like, oh, like with acrylics, you can, if you get it too thin, you can just do a couple layers and have a little more control. But with this, like the oils uh, over thinned start to get a little patchy and don't behave uh, quite right. So it's definitely like you got to practice with them. Um, and basically just figure out how to dilute them. I mean, I think that's true with acrylics too. I said this on Idle Champions, but it's like when, you, when you're when you watching videos and you're like, oh wow, they use these paints and they got such a great effect. It's really learning how to, don't buy new paints, trust me. I bought paints, brands, buy the set, buy the full set, and I use like 10% of them. Uh, just like learn how to use the paints you own or your favorites to, and how to get them to behave how you want. Because that, when you translate what, a video's result to like your paints I'm gonna to try to get my paints uh, to work this way that is what is actually gonna make you a better painter there's no product that makes you a better painter uh, it's just learning to like get the paint under your control um, so same way with oils you're gonna go through that it's gonna be a huge learning curve not huge but you know you're gonna get some some minis that, that uh, <laughs> you might need to uh, go back a little bit and but honestly about the drying time uh, we use so such little amounts of paint on miniatures that it honestly doesn't take as long as like a canvas painting. Um, and also, typically, again, because of the small amounts of paint, if you dry off the layer of spirit, um, you actually, I've gone straight to acrylics over top of the oils. You know, the, the, the recesses might have a ton of more of the oil in there. It might kind of get messy. But when you're detailing on the upper levels, the, the, the amount of, of oil on it is so thin that you just hit it with a hair dryer and you can pretty much be good to go on that surface. Um, so I don't know. I kind of just blabbered on about random stuff there. But I, that's been my experience with oils, and I definitely want to practice with them a little more. Um, most of the stuff I'm painting now is acrylic, just because I've, I've learned um, some things about you know, I, I'm practicing some larger scale uh, busts and that kind of thing, and how to paint them differently, and how to use how I most like to use uh, acrylics for 
you know, wet blending and that kind of thing, because I'm learning that goes a long way on a large surface, and like what the difference of painting something that's tiny that you can kind of get away with, uh, you know, making some mistakes on, or you don't need to render details as well, versus something that like every surface is visible. So that's been a lot of fun, but I've mostly been doing acrylics on that because I'm more familiar with them. So the new experiment there is the scale and the context. But once I go back to some of my own stuff, um, I, I definitely want to, I think I even said in a post, I was like, I don't know if there'll be another miniature again that I paint without oils. <laughs> uh, just because their, their properties are, are so neat. And they just seem to fit in the way that I like to paint. Like kind of Ill, more like almost illustrative, um, where I don't mind like seeing the brush strokes. So you can feather things out if you want. Um, but and you can also get like really tight details as well, and it's it's like very it's a very painterly process. It's not like do a layer, let it dry, do a layer, let it dry. It's very like back and forth and judging everything. Um, so that's why I've had having a ton of fun with oils. But best place to start is oil washes and get the dilution down, and you'll learn how different things stain more or how some, you know, can be washed off or cleaned off a little more easily. Um, glossy surfaces with a wash, matte surfaces with a wash, using varnishes or paints that have those finishes. Um, there's, a, there's a lot to practice, but I think the, the most common use and probably the, the most forgiving use is oil washes. You can slop it on, clean it off as much as you'd like, go back and forth, and uh, just get really clean definition that way. Just kind of like hypnotic. Yeah, this is this is a really fun step where it like comes together. Like you you, you slap around that mid tone. Some of it you're kind of like ah, you know, it looks looks. I like the color, but it's kind of like you know a little messy. But this just starts to bring it together. I also realized we got to do a giveaway. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah I forget I'm like the average hobby hang. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good word for the giveaway. Oils. <laughs> Oils. Yeah, I don't know. I was talking about oil paints for like 20 minutes. Uh, uh, is, that, is that the best we can do? No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> what's on your mind? What was outside of oil? We're talking about wizards. We're talking about casters. We're talking about wizards. Painterly? Painterly? <laughs> paint early and paint often. That's what I say. There you go. Dry brush from Leticia. You got to pick something, hamster. Oh, it's on me. Okay. It's on you. You're the guest of honor. Oh dear. Oh, you I, know what? Interference. Interference. The, camera. the magical yeah. golden paint. Football. Football. <laughs> Interfer pass interference. Interference. <laughs> hey, can you pass the interference? <laughs> this is the fine interference. That's some fine That's interference. Some fine interference. There you go. Oh, brother. <laughs> Where art thou? That's fair. <laughs> Where art thou? Interference. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, uh, what are we giving away? So, uh, <laughs> if you are unaware, we are currently doing a Kickstarter for these very pieces, as well as a bunch of others. Yes. Uh, about 15 other sculpts outside of this one you're seeing right here. Uh, it's called Reliquaries. Uh, I'm going to pop a little link in the chat real quick. If you want to check that Kickstarter out. Um, we're giving away $50 of Pledge Manager credit uh, to get some stuff from Reliquaries. Uh, the Pledge Manager is where you make all your final choices once the Kickstarter is closed. So basically, once the Kickstarter is done and when the Pledge Manager opens up, we will assign uh, $50 of credit to the email that you give us if you win this giveaway. This is internationally available. You can get this no matter oh, that's where awesome. you are. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, just, it's digital. So I know it's, that's, yeah, that's been like kind of an obstacle for some giveaways in the past, so that's great. It, there's a lot of weird figuring out which country it's the thing of like doing the research to figure out like which countries it becomes a hurdle for and yeah. which ones it doesn't is right. a mess <laughs> so it's just that's what make it easy yeah well and pledge manager credit is just such an easy such a nice thing to do a giveaway for right um Feels like all you really have left is hitting those metallic accents. 
Yeah, I am going to do one more of the, the step I talked about of just hitting some upper areas, but it's very fast because we've got some nice opaque layers. So you're just picking out some of the corners and pieces to really reinforce the gradient. Um, this is just, again, kind of salting to taste. Um, mm -hmm. Very fast. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. kind of going across every little bit, looking at it at different angles. Where can I pop a little bit? But you want to be a little more selective with this step. Because uh, it's putting this next to everything else we've done that that makes the whole thing pop. But like right there, on, uh, where you at? on that side, see so you can kind of see more of the uh, shift. So I'm hitting things like the tops of the curls and that kind of thing to really make them stand out. <sighs> it's just a cool piece, man. Yeah, it's God, just a I really just... cool piece. I love the bottom base part, which didn't even I, exist I, in the first iteration. You knew I, I remember when that base came in, Ooh. and you, yeah, like all the all the stress over you feeling like you needed to try and think of some really cool yeah. special thing to like do to them. It's like, and it just wound up with like, no, just give it the just same. Just make dry sure you can see else. it because it's yeah. gorgeous as heck, and that's all it needs. <laughs> yeah, just trying to do like all like the bright green and stuff on it. Oh it's man, just like, yeah, that was yeah, a, just not that right was a mistake. Sometimes you just gotta throw crap at the wall and and t let your friends tell you that you need to change it. <laughs> what do you guys do with all the pieces after the Kickstarter? All the prototypes. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do with all these because this is a different situation than when we do terrain. For terrain Kickstarters, we hold on to them for a very long time. Yeah, because those are the only ones that exist, you know? So, like, we got yeah. if we want to use them, we got to keep. We still have every Wildlands prototype in yeah. office in a bunch of bins in Nate's office. Yeah, you definitely. we definitely have every single, uh, you know, spirit tree hollow and one of them is definitely not uh, at my place I that think, I stole. I think after all, I think after all the Kickstarters, there's a certain after a certain period of time, I'm pretty sure we uh, put them into storage somewhere. Yeah, I think some exist in storage. Yeah. Uh, once we have ones. like a good amount of the actual finished Dwarvenite here, but we'll, we'll we always, no matter what, we always hold on to the masters. Oh yeah. We always got to have the masters like accessible at any time right uh yeah so that's a kind of another example of like working at dwarven forge so you have uh it kind of goes from the grunt pieces the extras featured extras the the ones that hold up the rest of the pieces you know the mountain stuff that's on the bottom or in the back uh then the ones that are kind of going to be the you know the wall of stone or dungeon that actually is facing like mostly mostly visible that needs to be pretty top notch but it's still amongst a large amount of pieces but then there's the masters um, or even a sample that needs to like show the factory how to paint it um, so it needs to be really precise um, we usually do two at least one for the factory and one to compare here um, so those take a little more time but yeah that's kind of the the trajectory of of dwarven forge prototypes sort of the the three realms that they fall into. Apparently a bunch of people are having issues with their phones watching the stream today. Hmm. Which it says our it says our upload speed and everything is fine and we haven't changed any uh we haven't changed anything. So I think it might be it's just weird for it to be happening to multiple people at once. Every right. now and then we'll have somebody who's having an issue, but for a bunch of people to be having issues with watching it is weird. All right. Ooh, that's yeah, for the gold? The, for the gold, um, I've Vallejo. been falling in love with the uh, metal color, airbrush colors from Vallejo for metals. Um, but they, they actually go on, I've actually rarely used them in an airbrush. Uh, they just, the metallic paints often run into a problem because like the, the actual metallic part is, is like heavier and thicker. So they're kind of gloopy and kind of don't thin well and everything. But these are somehow like thin and still metallic. Um, and actually that is true of the Dwarven Forge or the Picorni uh, metals as well they work very well i mostly just picked this up because i had it on my hobby desk and it was a color that i didn't want to have to mix for every prototype but you could especially because this is a very uh i'm using a very professional tool here just the top of a tupperware it's hard to see but it is kind of it's not like a super warm gold it's like almost bronzy or brassier 
Um, so if you kind of tweak the bronze, or probably even just use the the Gorgon bronze, um, you're 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 going to be pretty close to to what this is already. You have a minor offset between video and audio. Nothing oh, really has good changed. Delay. I wonder. Hmm. Some OBS thing or something. I wonder if that's on our end or if that's on Twitch's end. It, I don't know. It's, it seems like there's a lot of weird little problems today. Yeah, you never know, man. Like, Ever consider doing a charity auction of some of the prototypes? We talked about it. I think we've actually done some of that a little bit. I don't know if we've done charity. I think I know we've given away prototypes. Or we, yeah, we've given them away to like some school clubs. Like somebody, somebody's somebody got some cattail prototypes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bands. That's right. Uh... Yeah, we've given. Yeah, doing a charity auction would be cool though. Just need to know what charity. Set up an event with a couple other people, you know. Yeah, always into that. And actually, every time I use, uh, I'm sort of going back to my tangent here, but every time I use like a premix color, I actually try to avoid it. Ninety nine percent of my stuff is painted with Bacorni because one, we want to tell you guys how to paint it. And, uh, you know, the factory uses um, colors based on ours as well. So I got to figure out how to get this with Bacorni anyway. Uh, so hopefully if you want to paint ruins down the road, because uh, I, I do want to at some point do a painting ruins video. Maybe I can tell you how to add some of these accents and have a Bacorni mix. But We have a good amount of painting videos we need to do once the Kickstarter is over. Yep. We need to do ruins. We need to do swamp. <laughs> ish swamp slash new forest they use like a lot of the same yeah tones. very similar just some yeah. of the details are a little different and uh, we did a charity thing for forge better future right but it wasn't a charity auction i don't mean we have we haven't like it's not, it wasn't with the prototype yeah we haven't done like a prototype auction thing um on in the uk so it might be a twitch latency thing fascinating i'll restart the computer after this maybe i just need to restart it hey remember Hamster Hobby Hang, though this is mostly an honorary one, isn't a Hobby Hang without some technical difficulties, all right? I feel like that's all of our streams. <laughs> On brand. Yeah. Let's roll this giveaway. Woohoo! Let's roll this giveaway. Ladies and gentlemen, who's going to win? Kent Durrell. Hey! Congratulations! I think, I, think, I think you've already won, too. Oh. <laughs> Are we doubling up? Because Glamour yeah. Moth has won twice. Oh my god. Kendra's won twice. I mean look, you've got a deal you've got to deal with EU shipping. So I think this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> like I think this is perfectly fine. I have no I have Just no to problem. Place that burden on. <laughs> I have no problem with people who have to deal with uh with EU shipping winning multiple times. Cause uh you're 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 really kinda getting the shaft on that end. All right, so I'll just make a. I don't need to get your information then. I'll just make a note by yours. Uh, I'll just put a little times two next to yours, like I did with times two, baby. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Starting to feel like six of clubs here now. That's the <laughs> thing, uh, Wyvern. Maybe you're the new six. There you go. <laughs> it's entirely possible. Maybe it's a Highlander situation. There can only be one now that six is. Uh, Have you defeated now that six, six of clubs in a duel? Is that what happened? Although in this case, I guess it would be losing to six in one <laughs> duel and then continuing to lose every duel after. This doesn't map very cleanly onto Highlander. <laughs> um, mostly just like the idea that there's always got to be one. Right. There can only be one. But like, like that's that's the. There's probably a better thing. There's you know you know there's no Sean Connery saying he's a Spaniard, but that's close. We could probably get that. We could pay for that. <laughs> Do you think he has a cameo? <laughs> Sean Connery probably has a cameo. Oh, right? man. Like a fiver. We can pay him to say some stuff. I would love that. We are Back like reliquaries that. now. <laughs> Big dice. Reliquaries. Junior. <laughs> Epic Thrones for legendary dice. Shaka Connery. That's very good. <laughs> that's extremely good, Mace. That's one of your best gags. I've not won ever either, so I'll battle it out with you. <laughs> Um, so I guess you know I'm I'm trying to get these these this goal done pretty quickly, but there's some detail 
on the front here, I try to frame all these. The one thing shot. I did was a uh, there you go. Frame the vignettes up here with some gold. This thing will be gold. And really, it's just a matter of. I mean, this is the most precise step. It's the most precise step, but yeah. the sculpt helps you. Like even these are probably some of the smallest things you do. But I'm just because you're just hitting raise, raised edges, right? I mean, you're hitting raised edges, so I'm yeah. using the side of a smaller brush and just ha using a light touch, so I'm not pressing down so that nothing else gets hit. But I'm just letting that raised detail catch the paint off the side of the brush. So it goes pretty fast and still for a pre more precise step, it's pretty low precision because of that. A lot of us in the same go. boat. Well, you know, hopefully it's not the Titanic. <laughs> that is one of my favorite. <sighs> I haven't heard that before, that's good. The Titanic? Yeah, well, yeah. It what is that? It was a massive cultural no. event, <laughs> No, I mean saying uh, we're in the same boat. Oh, I hope it's not the Titanic. Well, that's because that was some uh, bit of improvised comedy I came up with myself. Hey, he's a genius. Don't know if you know this. I am a comedian. That's great. No, I'm saying like I I laugh at a lot of your jokes, but I was like that is actually very that was good. good. I didn't laugh at that one. That one just made me respect you. <laughs> I just sat I just sat back and was like, that's when that I was knew. funny. That's the kind of that's the kind of jokes I want to tell. Yeah. Where I'm just want, like flabbergasted at their brilliance. I don't want I don't want people to laugh at my jokes. <laughs> I want them to hear me joke I, and go, "That man." I prefer is a thought leader. I prefer a knowing silence over laughter. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want people to I don't want people to sit there and laugh. I want them to go home and think. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. With my Titanic jokes. Right. Does being here since Dungeon of Doom make me a youngin? Or am I somewhere in the middle by now? Uh, it makes me the same age as Hamster, I think. Yeah, I, uh... You well, make... actually, my first Kickstarter was Caverns, but they were playtesting the module. Of oh, of right. Of That's Doom. right, because we're always very behind on those modules. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't paint any Dungeon of Doom, but I started... Honestly, my first okay. couple weeks, I was literally just doing the first step base coat on a bunch of caverns. It was like one color, maybe, on everything. Is there anybody currently here who started with Dungeon of Doom? Started? When did Toby come in? No, Toby's Toby was here before Castles. Longer. He was here before Castles. Um, Janet, maybe? Because she worked on Dungeon of Doom? She did. Was she here, be was she here before Dungeon of Doom? I am not a hundred percent sure, but I, I think like, she was here like, like after Aaron, Nina, Toby. Like yeah, Aaron, Nina, and Toby been here for a long time. Michelle's been here for a long time. Basically, the entire sculpt team has been here for a long time. Yeah. Uh, long time, I guess, being sort of relative. It hasn't been like twenty years for any of them, but no, but probably like five, at, at least, if not more. When was done? I feel wait. I when, when was Castles? Wasn't Castles like twenty fifteen? Was that right before was that the one before Dungeon? Oh man, I get to look this up. Castles was before Dungeon of Doom, yeah. But like right before, right? Oh, I mean they had time in between. No, no, no. I'm saying like it went Castles, Dungeon of Doom, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Castles was four. Dungeon of Doom was five. One moment. I need to look this up. Looking up a little history. We've already looking up a little. We've already little talked history. about Titanic. Now we're going into Dwarven Fortress. Hi, Amy. Hey, Topulus is here to the hobby hang. Hey, Topulus, how you doing? You missed the hobby hang. <laughs> uh, okay, castles. Last updated in 2017. Sure, but when did it fun? This are going in 2016. Okay, so it ran early 2016. Okay. So, yeah, that's five and a half years ago. Jeez Louise. I'm just hitting this top rim with some white. Every piece kind of has a white accent on sort of one of the main views as you're looking at the family. So, just hitting this upper little bowl. Is it ending? Uh, Tacos, I think we're wrapping up pretty soon. Oh, I guess we already are over time. I mean, I, like but, uh, like I said, I gotta finish these for Tyler. So, but uh, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I guess we could just sit here. And... I don't know what you're what you're doing yourself. But... Sheep image quality just dropped again. Oh yeah, it looks like we're down. We were at seven hundred for a bit. 
Man. Man, what the heck? Get off the stage! I guess it is a thing. We need to shoot some stuff in here. Okay. We've, <laughs> we, while, while you're painting, some stuff was lit that we need to film. Oh, good. Uh, well, then, yeah, by all means. Shall we, uh... Stefan says, after the first Kickstarter, he started hiring more people. When was the first? Um, game tiles was... When did game tiles fun? Estimated delivery May 2013. So was it a 2012 Kickstarter? Probably. So you've actually been on Kickstarter for less than 10 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Huh. So eight Kickstarters in nine Kickstarters. Yeah, because we had 666. So Wild Ends was actually eight instead of seven. So this is nine. So nine Kickstarters in about nine years. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. It's kind of buck wild, even. <laughs> oh, man. Ten, so, so 10 year Kickstarter anniversary is next year, and it's also our 10th Kickstarter. What? Yeah. So, a decade, a decade of Kickstarter with our 10th project next year. So, go, so, we're going from like 25th anniversary this year to like 10th anniversary of Kickstarter specifically next year. Wow. It's pretty nuts. That's insane. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Just to wrap this up, the only uh, the, the only steps that are remaining is uh, I would sometimes thin down the uh, Picorni Blue and get it. And anywhere there's a shadow, I try to just kind of creep up a glaze into here. You can also skip it because we're looking pretty good with the dry brush steps. But while I'm doing that, I hit these inner accents with more uh, blue. Just to back up, because the, th the way that interference works is uh, it is completely dependent on what's underneath it and mm -hmm. how the light hits it. So if you were to put this on this like almost white uh, layer, it would just appear kind of pearly white. And then at yeah. certain angles, as you uh, tilt it, you would see the shimmer. Conversely, yeah. the other way, and the way we most commonly use it, is on a dark base is when it, the color appears uh, like this violet. The violet actually shows up over a dark. So um, I paint it with sort of the darker blue to make sure it's nice and outlined and separated. And then you hit it with this uh, to make it the actual shimmery violet. And uh, that's about it on these guys. But obviously we, we got most of the paint scheme here. And uh, it's just those last couple steps and then we're good to go. So yeah. that's usually, the Elven Hero and you can uh, convert that over to a lot of ruins as well. Usually when I use interference, I use it a lot on like shield decals and designs and stuff. And oh, I, yeah. I just, I go over the raised edges of the thing I want to be interference with black. Yes, black. I, I mean, black is, that's all like the Dwarvenite and whatnot. We base it black and hit it with the interference and it just really pops. That's what I did on my Eldar army as well. Uh, you know, Eldar! Space elves. Eldar, uh, Eldar definitely sounds like a fantasy property that like Dexter's lab would have come up with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 let's answer Kentrell's question and then probably get out of here. We got some stuff we got to handle because we're running a Kickstarter right now. Right. So like we're being pulled. In I've heard of directions. that. Yeah. Uh, have you yeah. tried the Green Stuff World paints? I haven't used any of their paints. Um, I have seen some of their color shifting paints, but these these work really similarly. Um, I'm not a hundred. I can't speak to their properties over different colors. These aren't done yet. Sorry, I'm still working on it because I was talking. I'm so sorry. I told them I was going to finish They're it. They're almost done in the stream. I am almost done. I know. Uh -huh. But, but uh, like I said earlier, like every hamster hobby hang equivalent, I paint for about 10 minutes and I just blab on for the remainder. Tyler. What about the green stuff? I um, interrupted. I just was trying to, I was trying to see what sure, sure. You, you just wanted to pop in and crack the whip real quick. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah note taken. Thank you. Uh, yeah. But so I haven't used their color shift paints. I have used the uh, Turbo Dark a little bit. Um, <laughs> Turbo Dark. Yeah, so there's some color shift stuff. Um, I don't think the properties are exactly the same. So honestly, for a similar effect, um, you don't need a big bottle like this, but I'd probably use something like this. I'm biased because I'm more familiar with it. But I would, I would, would, you'd be surprised how much good stuff you can get from just a traditional art store. And especially in like a lifetime supply, even the smaller one, it's going to be a lot less expensive per volume than some of those. So um, I would look into that. Um, but Green Stuff World, I've mostly used like the texture rollers for basing, that kind of thing. They're great. I have a leaf punch by them uh and I, I actually want to try that out with like aluminum foil to try to maybe get them a little crunchy um but i i do like a lot of their products i just haven't used uh the <laughs> color shift paints okay mace we're wrapping up so what's happening next uh, what's happening next so. um all right 
tomorrow night, we are going to have uh, Jake Stormone, Sarah from Mustang's oh, Art, nice. who designed... Ow, I pulled my finger back too far. Uh, <laughs> Sarah from Mustang's Art, who designed the Combat Wheelchair, and Matthew Lillard uh, on stream tomorrow night uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, kind of the way that fantasy uh, influences fantasy, media, like other forms of, of media, movies, books... Uh, uh, tabletop games, kind of how they they cross pollinate and influence each other, um, and kind of then how they inspire like the kind of characters that we want to make. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we are doing something. <laughs> we're doing a Q. I think that's we're doing the Q and A. I think we're doing just a just Nate and and I are just going to be in here. We're just going to have all the sculpts there. We're going to be like, hey, anything you want to see. We're just sitting here and answering questions and doing demos and 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 what whatever whatever you haven't seen from all the stuff we put out yet, uh, we're doing that. Uh, I believe Wednesday afternoon, Thursday night, we're gonna have Persephoroth, uh, Mermaid Royal, and Brennan Lee Mulligan on to talk about uh, using these fantasy rule sets uh, to tell modern stories. They're all they're all masters of kind of taking, uh, you know, these these rule sets that are were initially made to be in like medieval-esque settings and use them to tell like really compelling contemporary stories um and then on friday uh that evening an hour before the kickstarter ends at seven o'clock eastern we are going to be doing a, a countdown stream team's party gonna be time. here just hanging out we're gonna be party we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get blackout <laughs> Uh, By turning on the lights, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get blackout. We're gonna promise a bunch of things that we can't deliver on. Yeah. Uh, we're <laughs> gonna we're gonna see how we're gonna see how hard we have to throw uh, some of these resin prototypes before they break. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be wild. the craziest stuff always happens. At I've the ordered. I, yeah, I've ordered a based I, on Wildlands. I ordered one day delivery on a sledgehammer. <laughs> uh, we're 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 going in. We're going in, buddy. Uh, and that's all the streams that are left. Uh, awesome. Well, look out for those. Over. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me and uh, painting along with me. Oh, hey, Mace. No, not the crook. Oh, God. Uh, he's Help uh, me. He's doing a bit.